The second in the series, Hyperdimension Neptunia Mark II, has you playing as the little sister of the first game's protagonist. The four CPUs from the first game have been captured by our four, and it's up to their sisters to save them. Whereas the first game's story was a parody of the console wars, this game takes place in an alternate universe and is a parody of the current internet piracy issue. And like the first game, there isn't even a hint of subtlety. The main enemy group being called R4, a well-known DS hacking device, and their lieutenants having the title CFW, obviously standing for custom firmware. Also, you're fighting to regain the CPU's source of power, world shares, which clearly represent customer purchase numbers. So, you spend most of the game recruiting characters, finding mascots, and regaining world shares. It's standard JRPG story progression, done pretty well. The only real issue I have with it are the reoccurring villains. You'd think after the fifth time beating them, the heroines would just cut off their heads and be done with it. The battle system is improved over the first one. It's still turn-based, but you can move your characters through the field, along for a strategic placement. The combo system is easier, however at the cost of customization. You can still change them, but you're limited to just changing 9 inputs, whereas in the first one, you could customize every possible button combination. For combat basics, X initiates attacking, then Square focuses on power attacks, X focuses on guard breaking, and Triangle is Rush, which raises your SP used for special attacks. And thankfully, you can manually heal, no longer having to rely on the auto potion system of the first game. You'll also end up with more character choices, 12 playable characters plus two more that will be future DLC. And like the first one, all the non-CPU characters are based on companies that had a hand in making the game. The dungeon design is better, but still pretty linear. Also, to find hidden items, you have to basically mash the O button until a purple box pops up, which can be pretty annoying. To get shares back, you have to complete quests, which are the standard kill monsters and gather items. This is really grindy, especially if you want to recruit the CPUs from the first game as you need to get the city shares up to 50%. For the most part, the graphics are exactly like the first game, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. They do look pretty good, assuming you like the anime style. Also, the talking scenes use animated characters instead of the static ones from the first game. Though I don't understand why they can't just do standard cutscenes. They would both look better and help the game's humor. The music is decent. Nothing spectacular, but certainly not bad. Same with the voice acting, and it is nice that they got the same voice actresses back from the first one. The situation is dire, I am afraid. ASIC has taken control of the world. Everyone knows of them and their power. R4's heretical followers are handing out illegal chips like candy. It's natural to see kids with several. People like getting these gifts for free, so they start to believe in ASIC, and that conversion weakens the CPUs. It took us such a long time to gather enough faith to make that tiny piece of Sherisite. With the CPUs all in captivity, it's only natural that people stop believing in them. We failed to save them, too. My supposition is that ASIC's primary objective is to revive their guardian deity. I didn't mention this earlier, but this game actually has an M rating. At first, while there was some fan service, I didn't see anything that would warrant above a T rating. But later in the game, there was a scene involving Ram and Ram that was uncomfortable to say the least. Also, the battle system change is nice for boss fights, but it has the problem of making normal fights take longer because the enemies will always start out of your attack range. Now as for the length, it's a bit shorter than the first one, taking anywhere from 20 to 30 hours depending on how much time you spend on side quests. Although there is New Game Plus and different endings, so it does encourage replays. But overall, it is a good JRPG, and it's mostly better than the first one. The audience for this is quite niche, like the first one is, but fans of the genre will likely enjoy this one. 
Thank you for watching and see you next time.